the lean startup was started with this guy in the middle, Eric Ries, who uh, wanted to get funding from Steve Blank. And Steve said, I love your business, happy to give you money on one condition, that you do my Stanford course on customer development. And as he work, worked through that, um, Eric was a software developer and took into account the cu customer development process of, of putting customer development before product development and coming from the experience of agile software development, cloud computing, um, and the scalability that that, that that brings, really came up with this, this idea of how do you create a lean startup? Of how do you build a business by running short experiments to test and validate against that. So your customer development and your product development is happening in parallel through these short iterations, getting real feedback to help you make the decisions along the way. And wrote the book, The Lean Startup. And that's the crux of where a lot of this, this thinking came from is around the Lean Startup. And, and it's around running small, short iterations, sm short experiments to build and validate the business model of, of the thing. Importantly, moving along the curve um, to, to kill assumptions. Um, the, business, the Lean Startup is a, is a really simple process, build, measure, learn. So you start with, with you build something, uh, uh, you build some kind of experiment, you put it out in the market, you measure how that does, and then you analyze, those, analyze the data from that and make insights and learnings from that. And then design the next, and then you build the next, or design and build the ne next experiment. And interestingly, with the, the lean startup, that's that's how you implement it: is build, measure, learn. When you design it, you design backwards. So you start with what is it that we want to learn? What is the assumption um, that we have? Um, in the experimentation uh, terminology, it's like to run an experiment, you need an hypothesis. What do I assume to be true? How will I measure if that's true? And then how do I build the experiment? to gather that data to determine whether that's true. And so when you're designing for the, for the lean startup, you design backwards. So you work out, you, you identify what your assumption is, what you want to learn, what data will show whether that is true or not, and then what do you build that will generate that data for you. And so normally the very first um, thing you're going to be doing is a list of questions to go and your first thing you'll build is a customer survey and you'll measure how that does, and you'll move the insights from that, and, and you'll learn what the assumption is, do my customers have this problem? Or are they in this area at this time? Or is, do they want to solve this? If, or do they struggle with this? Do they have this problem? Like that's what your first version of your business, of your product is, is a customer service. Um, and and, and that's, that's the real crux of, of this whole, of, of the Lean Startup, is designing these short experiments to move it. So when you're building startups, this, this is really the graph behind every single startup, behind every single idea. Um, that everything starts out as a small idea and it has an exceptionally high amount of risk. And your job is to move along this line, the, the x-axis of reducing the risk. And as you reduce the risk, you increase your valuation. That's how you create value. So as you can kill assumptions, do my customers exist? Do they have this problem? Will they use this solution? Will they pay me for this solution? Is the market big enough? All of those are assumptions that you're killing. And as you kill those assumptions, you're decreasing the risk behind the idea that you're building and hence increasing your valuation. So what should the label be for this x-axis? Time. Time? Any other suggestions? Maybe information data. Information data? Cool. Money? Assumptions. Pardon? Assumptions. Assumptions, experience. Yeah, so... A natural first thing is to think it's time, or to think it's money, and those are mistakes that we make with startup. In gathering information is one part of it, but it's validation. And validation means killed assumptions, and the thing that you need to do is to find the biggest, scariest assumption, the thing that keeps you up at night, and, and kill that. Normal modus operandi for early stage business, let's kill a bunch of assumptions, de-risk this business, I'm going to hire a team, get an office, do, that's all... If you guys have just finished studying, that's work avoidance behavior. You know, that's, I'm not going to do the hard stuff that keeps me up at night. Will people buy cheese on a stick delivered by a drone? Oh, I need a team, I need product, and all of this stuff. Office, yeah. <laughs> yes, you, 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 you do do a little bit of validation. You know, you show you can hire, you show you can manage. You can, that's not the thing that's going to get you money in the bank with investors. The thing that's going to get you money in the bank with investors is we found out that people love cheese on a stick when it comes to them in a drone. Because it comes to them, 
at the time when they're hungry because we've got their Fitbit that tells them when their sugar's dropping and that thing arrived and we've got happy customers, right? You know, and that can be your first step and you can do it in a way that doesn't scale. You can, you can pretend to be the drone. <laughs> you know, and you can fake as much as you want, but that's the validation that, that comes through there that people want to buy the thing. And so, the number one job of your startup is to increase your valuation because you're looking to raise to up your burn rate to be able to scale. And, and, and a lot of this has come from where people used to think, or in a, in a corporate setting, you design this massive product, you spend all this money, you try and build all these other things without removing your biggest assumption first. And when it fails, they write off a couple of hundred million just for the sake of it. Now, as a startup, that's a very difficult thing to do. Specifically, if you're going to need funding to grow and scale, you're probably going to have to raise that externally from other people. So if you go to someone and say, this is my great business plan, I just need to build this factory and hire 100 people and do all this thing, but you haven't actually done anything, it's going to be very difficult to get that money. Whereas if you can go to them and say, I did this from my kitchen, I built this, I sold 3,000 of them from my kitchen, I now need a small amount of money to just move into a garage and hire two more people and do this and sell the next 10,000. That becomes a very easy thing to fund and it means that you're going to get the right kind of funding at the right stages. Because one of the things that kills startups most often is getting the wrong funding at the wrong time. I don't know if no funding or too much. And they build the wrong thing, they go off in the wrong... And, and why too much money is a bad thing is because when you build too much, you, you lose the focus on learning. And so you, lo you lose the identity of are you on the right track. And so if you have too much money, you can run for years down a certain path only to realize that you, you actually customer doesn't have that problem. And you're kind of running, that batch size is so big that you're running a lot of experiments at the same time. You just don't know what you're running and you don't know what you do. If you imagine, this is science, right? So if you imagine someone conducting experiments in the lab, those high school science experiments, how, how long does it take for the thing to fall down to the ground and you want to try different size balls? It's like someone goes, whoa, I've got lots of money, I'm throwing all the balls in the air and they're all landing on the ground, it's awesome. Well, what about that one over there that's made of feathers that doesn't fall as, you know, you're not learning those things because you're doing all those experiments at once, you're like, balls are amazing. Uh, and look at all the balls I've bought. I'm, I'm so smart. I've got beach balls and these things, and we're doing all this stuff. And whereas if you had enough to do one, you then figure out how that thing works, and then you could do another one. And so a temporary, temporary organization um, in search of a scalable business model is exactly that. It's a learning organization. And, and the, the benefits of staying small and focusing small means that you can focus on finding real problems or finding a real customer problem and validating that's a solution before you spend all the money, before you build all the tech.